following show is a paid program. How you doing today? We are celebrating Black Music Month for the month of June. We have the best of the best with us on today. Miss Mesa Leek, national record, jazz recording artist. Also, Daryl Anders, bassist, producer of Agape Soul. Hello to both of you. <laughs> Hello, Ken. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> how's it going today? Mesa, we have one person that loves you like life itself, including <laughs> myself and Daryl, too. She says oh. to you, I have loved her since incognito. All up and through her playlist is Mesa. That's Diana oh. Patterson, my executive producer. So oh, she puts awesome. everything together. <laughs> she makes me look good. And she's the one to tell Mesa that on today. Mesa and Daryl, thank you for the opportunity, first of all. Thank oh, you, thank first you. of all, about Thanks for black having music. Us. Uh, you okay. all are the first for us for black music, and we wanted to do a series of it. We want to represent it, especially after COVID. We want to tell people where you are, what you're doing, uh, and things like that, because this is a new for all of us, our new normal, right? Mm -hmm. So this is how we're starting sure. everything. Mesa, starting with you, lady, Baltimore native. Uh, let's start. And how did you get started in music? Wow. I started back in, well, I started when I was a little kid. My mom took me to see Pearly when I was really young. And when Mobile Moore came out on stage, I, I knew that that's what I wanted to do the rest of my life. And so uh, from that point on, I was focused, kind of hyper-focused on being a singer. And so I went through high school, junior high school, you know, uh, elementary school the whole time in choirs and singing in talent shows and all stuff, trying to prepare myself. Then I got to Morgan State University. I was on the Morgan State University choir under the direction of Dr. Nathan Carter. And uh, we toured a lot, went to Africa, East Africa for uh, a whole month. And uh, just being, being on the choir was a great uh, experience as far as getting me prepared for the music industry. Um, my degree is in classical performance, so I was supposed to be an opera singer, but I, I wanted to <laughs> sing jazz music, and so that's why I'm a jazz singer. Um, uh, after leaving Morgan, well, my last year at Morgan, my best friend Kim Brewer was already singing with Stevie Wonder, and when they came to Morgan to do a, a concert to celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday, uh, Kim asked Stevie if I could audition because they were looking for an alto voice. And so I did, and I passed the audition. That, that very day was the audition. It was scary. It was the most amazingly scary uh, audition of my life, but I passed it. But what I wanted, I was scared because I passed the audition. That means I have to go right to California. And um, I wasn't ready because I had one year left at Morgan. So I asked Stevie if I could please just finish my degree and then come to California. Well, he so such, such a nice man. He's like, absolutely, just let me know when you graduate. <laughs> and we bring you out to L.A. He did. But a year later, uh, in February of 1991, I moved to L.A. And I was able to do the Jungle Fever project with him, mm -hmm. uh, the soundtrack. I was, that was my first big professional gig, was singing background on that album. And um, from there, when uh, I was working doing other gigs with other producers in L.A., I had to do a producer, I work with a producer named Steve Harvey, uh, who is a, he's a, a drummer from Scotland. And uh, Steve called me one day and he said, Mesa, um, my uh, best friend is looking for a new singer for his band in England called Incognito. And he said, do you, do you want to audition? And I was like, okay, yeah, you're sure. You know, I, I just didn't want to go back to Baltimore. I was like, I'll do whatever. Right. Yeah, let, me, <laughs> let me just, because I wanted to keep going, you know. And so uh, one day I came off from work because I was working a regular job. Stevie had gone on a big Brazilian tour and I wasn't too new to go on that tour. So... Um, I was working at the make company, doing like different jobs, the warehouse out there in LA. <laughs> and um, and uh, he, he, and Louis called me. He called my phone. And he said, Mesa, um, can you sing a little bit for me? What kind of music do you like? We talked about music. I talked about 
Rufus and Shaka Khan, Earth, Wind and Fire, and the Commodores, like all kind of music that I grew up on. And he's like, wow, okay. And so he said, can you sing for me? And I did. And I sang, don't you worry about a thing. And uh, the next morning, his manager called me and said, well, Mace, we're not going to look for anybody else. You got the gig, so we're going to bring you to England. Uh, and that's what they did. They, they flew me to England, I think, two weeks later. And I, and I lived there for four and a half years, recorded the album Tribes, Vibes, and Scribes, and Deep Waters on, on the Positivity album, right. uh, and all those songs. Uh, and while I was with Incognito, we were on tour at the North, North Sea Jazz Festival. And after the, we had a big show, 18,000 people. And after the show, I was walking down this ramp to go to the dressing room. And uh, this man walked up to me and he said, hi, my name is Carl Griffin. I'm um, the VP of a and at, at, uh, at GRP Records. And I want to know if you're ready for your solo career. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, this is that easy. <laughs> it is amazing. So, uh, yeah, so then I, he, he called me, went to New York, and uh, signed my deal with GRP Records. And that's when I did my first solo album in 1995. And I've been, uh, now I'm, I'm working on album number 14. Oh, my God. Look at that. <laughs> Jump right in, Mr. Daryl. How did you get started? You're the bassist. You're a producer, songwriter of Agape Soul. Let's talk about it. Um, you know, I've been playing music since I was in the third grade. I played trumpet uh, in elementary and junior high school, and I switched to bass uh, in the ninth grade. But I, I grew up listening to you and playing music. You know, my family was pretty musical. My dad was a, a choir director and a band director. So there was music all, always in the house. And um, it just, it kind of got in my blood. So um, when I was 18, I joined the Air Force and I moved to, I was stationed in Japan. And while I was there, I played in a jazz club there like six nights a week. And that kind of opened my mind up to to jazz because I, I grew up mostly listening to R&B and soul and you know kind of the same stuff Mesa uh, listened to Earth, Wind & Fire and you know I heard the Brothers Johnson in 1976 and that pretty much changed my life um, but um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, fast forward I got out of the Air Force I moved to the Bay Area um, I played in a bunch of different bands here I got to work with some incredible musicians um as a side man for for years and years i worked with um zigaboo modalise from the meters for 10 years i played on a couple of his records um played with joyce cooling with peter horvath but just different jazz and 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 mm -hmm. r&b artists and at some point um i think in the mid 90s i was in a band here called cleveland lounge and um a friend of mine sent me the tape and the singer was Zoe Ellis. And four bars into it, I heard Zoe and I'm like, you got your bass player. You know, um, I kind of fell in love with her voice. And we we worked in that band and we did a bunch of different projects. We played in each other's bands for years. And she was one of the people that said, you know, you got this box full of cassettes of all these songs that you've written, you should do something with them. So um, I recorded some of those songs in, in order to make a demo tape, and that demo tape turned into the first Agape Soul record. Wow. And um, mm. it, it's just been going ever since. Absolutely. I so love the name Agape now. that you have, Agape. God's mm -hmm. unconditional love. Why so? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, it, and it's, it's just because, well, Agape represents you know, the, the positivity that I try to bring to and all my music and mm -hmm. uh, soul represents the type of music that I like. So I fuse those two words together to to kind of create something that represents what I want to do in, in music. You know, the goal is to always make people feel better when they leave than when they got there. And um, hopefully when people listen to my music that they, they feel something. I don't want to tell, dictate what feel, but I, I hope that they feel something and hopefully it's positive and, and uplifting. Sounds good. Let's so. look a video of uh, Mesa. Something happened in 1999 to you. Let's look at it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this next song we're going to do for you is a song that I wrote for my son, Jazz. In 1999, I was on tour with Incognito. We were in Osaka, Japan. I was six months pregnant and I was on stage when my water broke. 
Oh yeah. I gave birth to my son there. He was only two pounds. They told me he wouldn't survive. But by the grace of God, my son is now 17 years old. In his last year of high school, has a beautiful girlfriend and wants to be a filmmaker. So we are blessed, very blessed. But when I was in a hospital bed, I didn't understand what was going on with me. I was so far away from my family, and incognito had to go to Tokyo to finish the last week of shows. So I was there by myself in Osaka, Japan, couldn't speak the language, and I just had emergency surgery to have a baby. It was probably the most terrifying and most beautiful times of my life. When I was in the hospital bed, across my mind kept coming these words like ticker tape over and over and over again. I think I was losing my mind, but I got it back somehow. I knew my baby was coming, but he still came out of the blue. You say, <laughs> yeah, your message is you do not want anyone else to go through this at all, ever in their lives. Oh, I know. To, to be a preemie mom was a, it was a, a devastating, and, but it turned out, you know, my son is now, now he's 21, just graduated from college, and yes. uh, he's doing really well. So, um, you know, he's uh, studying photography and film and the filmmaking, and uh, he's working and, you uh, know, he's, he's doing his thing and, and about to go to uh, do two more years to get his bachelor's degree, too. So it's just, uh, you know, it's just been a, a wonderful experience. Just my baby is just a, he's a grown man now. So <laughs> it's been amazing. OK, so world, she's being very modest. I read it <laughs> for two and a half months. Your baby was in Japan and you weren't there. You had to come. Right. Back. Let's talk yeah. about that yeah. for ladies, that women that are in music, that may happen. It may yeah. happen to yeah. someone. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult. I mean, thank God I had my mother to uh, help raise my son while I was on the road. But we had a lot of separation anxiety. Uh, we, you know, thank, thank God for FaceTiming and, and all this stuff, and the cell phones and all that stuff. I was able to talk to him a lot more than I would have previous to 1999. So, um, so I'm glad I had him at the right time, kind of, sort of, too. <laughs> but also, um, just the, you know, I took my son a lot on the road with me, <laughs> which was, got me in trouble with the two officers here in Baltimore, uh, Maryland here. Uh, they they literally were, were about to arrest me. We, my attorney got me out of it. So uh, <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to take him. He, he wanted to come with me. Um, he just, and it's hard when your baby is saying, Mommy, don't leave me, you know, that kind of thing. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> I just put him, and plus I had, uh, you know, Southwest is wonderful. I get my companion pass. So it, it, he was free, and I was like, hey, <laughs> let's <just> go. <laughs> oh, my God, that is so sweet. Daryl is doing some music. Let's see him in action. Mr. Daryl.
That's him in action. Look at that. Look at that. So <laughs> to both of you, starting with you, Daryl, we know, and we talked about this a little bit, there's creativity in music up front, 10% of it. But there's 90% mm -hmm. of the, music, mu the business side of it, right? Many of us mm -hmm. don't get the business side. We lose out, especially during COVID. We saw that. Because the end of February, the beginning of March, all tours stop, all venues closed. Whatever you were doing, you were stopping at that time. And many people were full time, but when that stopped, their money stopped. They didn't have yeah. all the royalties. They didn't have their credits. They didn't have, you know, they weren't set up with a BMI or ASCAP or whatever. They just were not prepared. No one was. Who would have known? Let's talk about that, Daryl, starting with you, uh, with that information. What do you think in telling someone new, starting over, because this is our new normal, what do they need to do on the business well, side? Uh, They've got the creativity. The, the first thing you need to learn as much as you can about the business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, you, if you're a songwriter, um, make sure that you have your publishing and, and all that stuff intact. Don't wait until you think you have a hit record. Just just do it. I mean, I, I was fortunate enough that I had people uh, older than me to, to say, hey, make sure your business is on point. So mm -hmm. before I ever thought about making records, I had had that taken care of. Um, and you want to make sure that you surround yourself with people that know the business and also people that you can trust. I mean, that's one of the most difficult parts about the music business is finding people that you can can trust. And so I always say that the most important part of the music business is relationships. The, the most important part of, of any business really is relationships because you never know what relationship is gonna come to be the thing that moves the needle for you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I worked with a, a group of friends uh, producing music for video games a while ago, and that connection led me to make my first record. I had never thought about making a record, but mm -hmm. um, that led to the connection of making my first record and a whole bunch of other things. So um, just relationships is really key. You know, be kind to everybody because you never know who that person is that could change your life that that one relationship learn the business and also another important thing is diversify try to be as as informed about many different styles of music and different parts of the business i mean you know there are lots of things that you can do in music besides playing in a band and making records and touring you know you can make music for film you can make music for video games you can you know, play in casinos. Mm -hmm. There's just all sorts of things. And I've done a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and everything, everything I've done has informed the music that I make as an artist. And you learn from every single um, uh, opportunity, you know, all, all those mm -hmm. years that I spent in my bedroom, you know, playing incognito tunes, you know, and <laughs> one day I got Mesa Leak singing on my record. I mean, that's right. That's amazing to me. Absolutely. But, I agree with you. You know, those those relationships and those connections, you know, came full circle to make that happen. Absolutely. I'm and most importantly, to... God is in control of everything. So yes, yes, it doesn't yes. matter how yeah. much I do or don't do um, with, without God in the mix. None of it will happen. Absolutely. I'm mm -hmm. so glad you mentioned that. And, and, and you being a bassist and also a producer, getting your credits a lot of people are on records or they're you know part of a record but they're not credited they don't have the credit for it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and let's speak to them about that of how they get their credits well i mean that's that's part of the, the business thing i mean you want to make sure that you you are acknowledged for the work that you do mm -hmm. um and you know it, especially if you're writing you know, mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're writing and contributing to the music, you want to make sure that you get your publishing and your writing credits um, because it, it makes a difference. Um, I, I will say for myself, it's not, 
I make music because I want to, to create something positive for the world. So my, my end goal is not to be rich or famous. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my end goal is to, to, to touch people's hearts and, and create something positive and good. And if, if it takes off and, and I, I make some money, that's, that's a bonus, but that's, I don't make music with that being the, the primary reason. However, you got to have your business together. You, do. you know, you, you got to, you got to communicate and just learn as much as you can, you know, get, get books. I, I bought a book many years ago about the craft. It's called the craft and business of songwriting. Mm. And it talks about, you know, publishing and, and how to go about getting your songs placed and all these different things. So the more information you have, the, the better knowledge is power. Absolutely. Miss Mesa, jump right in here <laughs> and let's talk about that, especially to women. A lot of women that are in business, you know, uh, many times they're in this business. They don't know about contracting. They don't know who to trust either. Uh, not right. because men wouldn't, but I'm just saying women also. So let's right. let's talk to them about the business side of it. Well, in the, for business for everybody, well, especially uh, for new people coming up, uh, my what we have to do now uh, is to kind of what's important is to own yourself. Right. Right now, at this point, uh, to own your own music, own your own publishing, own your uh, everything. Because, uh, I mean, there are people that still have record deals available out there in the world, of course. But to to not have someone own you is probably the, the order of the day, as far as I'm concerned. You know, I just I started my record label in 2018 after being frustrated with um, how I was being, my music was being handled previously. So. I thought, you know, I'll do the best I can on my own. And, 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 and what's helped me with that is social media. Mm -hmm. So anybody started now has to have a strong social media game. That's how you have to start out. And these kids are out here, you know, like, uh, <laughs> yes. Little Don X, he started out with social media, selling records out of his trunk. I mean, that's, that's, that's what you have to do. I mean, it's just, I mean, you have to start there and then you'll get noticed because now record companies are, are looking for your numbers on Instagram and mm -hmm. and and all these different you know Twitch and all that Absolutely. kind of stuff. They want to see what yes. kind of is on there before they even hire you. So my my thing was that first of all, be an individual, be an original as much as you can. Don't try to be like anybody else. We don't mm -hmm. need another Beyonce. We don't need another you know Nas Hill, <laughs> Nas X, whatever name it. We don't need another one of those people. So we need you to be who you are yeah. and bring your gift to the world mm -hmm. and shine in your light. And then after that, you get a good social media game going. Then after that, you find a very good attorney to help very you good. complete your contracts and help you do all these different things you got to do. And then you surround yourself with people who have like minds, people who are positive, mm -hmm. people who are not uh, wallowing in negativity and drugs and drinking and doing things that they think the industry, you know, the fun, the, what they think is fun in the industry. You don't want to hang around people like that. You want to hang around people who are hardworking, People who are conscientious, people who uh, uh, have uh, have a goal, a goal, a real true goal, and um, that's the only way I think I've been blessed because I have surrounded myself with great people. Um, even with my running my own company, I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed because I do everything myself. I literally, <laughs> I'm, I, I package like I run my my store and I pack everything myself and I send it myself, and you know, so it takes a lot. It's a lot during the day, and I can't always keep up with everything. But for the most part, the joy in it is that I get all the money in the, in the mm -hmm. end. I get all of it. So that legacy yep. that I leave for my son and yes. for my future grandkids and for, you know, other kids in my family that, that you know, when I leave this earth, they'll have money coming to them forever. And that's right. my goal. Right. I'm so glad you mentioned that. And I'm so glad you spoke about your record label, Blue Velvet Soul Records. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Why yeah. that name? Uh, because my album that I got uh, nominated for a Grammy uh, with with the Nancy Wilson song uh, "Quiet Fire," the album is called "Blue Velvet Soul." Mm -hmm. And so, and my my best friend Kim, who introduced me to Stevie, she <laughs> said my voice sounded like "Blue Velvet Soul" to her. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why we named the album that, and that's why I continue to name my company that. And your music is so timeless, lady. Why so? Why do you? Think? Uh, because I focus on um, I focus on great lyrics and I focus on melodies that that kind of invade in a sense for lack of a better word invade your spirit mm -hmm. and uh and I think that 
when you when you come from the heart and you and I, I know I know that I'm a child of God and I know that God gave me this gift to share and help people to make them feel better not for me to be a superstar and an egotistical and have super bodyguards people can't talk to me and all that kind of stuff that was never my intention and never my my walk so I know that I'm just supposed to relay this gift that God gave me to other people to help them and the thing is long I think because I've I've stayed on that path um, that's how I've been able to, to stay in the game so long. And, but I think, and I, so that's one of, you know, when I do get the funding to hire and to, to sign artists, they have to have the same mentality mm -hmm. because what my record company is going to do for them is that once I make uh, my money back and, and a small profit, whatever that's going to be, um, I'm going to turn over their rights immediately to them, to their albums. They, they will be the owners of their own masters uh, very soon, not 20 years, not 30 years. Not even 10 years. It's going to be as soon as I make my money back. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. We're going to do this. We'll take a break on the Cam Hill Show. We'll be right back to the Cam Hill Show after these messages. The Cam Hill Show. If you'd like to advertise your business or become a sponsor, contact the Cam Hill Show at gmail.com. at Ron Carter Cadillac. Drive the new 2021 Cadillac XT4 Luxury Collection for only $319 a month. The new 2021 Cadillac XT5 Luxury Collection for only $399 a month, both for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase either and enjoy 1.9% APR for 60 months plus bonus cash. Gulf Freeway, just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter promise is to make sure my baby is safe and healthy. Because I know it is possible to acquire syphilis, HIV, or other STDs without knowing it, getting tested is my very first chance to protect my baby. Doctors are required to give expectant mothers three separate tests for syphilis. If you're pregnant, ask your doctor if you're being tested properly for syphilis and other STDs. Congenital syphilis can lead to a miscarriage, stillbirth, or an infant death. Don't risk your baby's health. To find out more, visit MyPrenatalPromise.com. And now back to the Cam Hill Show. Hey, family, we are back. We are back with Daryl Anders and Mesa. Daryl, how did you guys meet, you and Mesa? Uh, we met a couple years ago. Um, we were going to work on another, another song and... Um, uh, I think Mesa lost her voice in the studio, um, but mm -hmm. we, we kind of hit it off on that first meeting. And I, I really um, wanted to, you know, continue fostering that relationship. So when uh, Nobody But You came together, I sent it to her and uh, she loved the song and it, it worked out really well. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the video real quick of Nobody But You. Mesa, how did you <laughs> decide to get on this project? Oh, well, the first time uh, Daryl sent me a text and he said, uh, I got a song. Can you take a listen to it? And I was like, sure. And uh, when I turned it on, I was in the car with my, my two of my best friends and we were driving, going to the casino or something. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we listened to the song. 
And we were like, whoa, what? So we were so in love with the, the singer Sarah who sang the song. She's singing, right? Sarah, she sang mm -hmm. the song. Whoever's singing the demo, she just killed it. We were like, I was like, I don't know if I can sing this now. It's like, this girl's singing the heck out of this song. <laughs> but I love the song so much. Um, I was like, yeah, I'm going to attempt to try it. I was very intimidated, but I'm going to be honest with you, uh, trying to get the vocal right on this song because it was just such such a great vocal when, mm -hmm. I, when I heard the demo. So um, I was just, I love the song. I love the lyrics. I love the beat. I haven't done anything kind of that kind of bluesy type vibe. And so I was excited to do that. And so it just came together really nicely. Well, I will tell you guys, both of you all, that I've been trying to practice dancing off of that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I heard it's that. dance I heard a lot of music. I've been talking about it. It's yeah. swinging out. It's, you know, it's stepping. Uh -huh. You know, Chicago stepping. Uh -huh. It's swing out. It's line dancing. Yeah. I had another girl say she yeah. wanted to learn how to do a line dance. I said, wow. It <laughs> makes you want to just get out of the car and just dance, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just it's a feel songs. good song for sure. It's a feel yeah, good song. Feel good. It is. Daryl, where did you come up with this one? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this song, it started out, uh, I wrote it a long time ago, and um, the original version of it, and it sat in the shoebox for years and years. And uh, I, I brought it out to my friend Sundra Manning, who's a great singer, I mean, a great keyboard player and songwriter. And she flipped the groove of the song and kind of changed the feel of it. And it made it feel so good that I kind of rewrote the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just thought about, you know, m my wife and how, yeah. you know, she's the only person I want to be around. Um, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and it's not that kind of fairy tale, you know, love is just, you know, it's just that every day she's my favorite person. Um, it's the simple things that we do in life that that bring us joy, and I wanted to write a song to celebrate that kind of uh, romance because I think people get a skewed version of what what real love is about. So I wanted to write about grown up, you know, grown people love. Right. You know, we we've been through some stuff. We yeah. we've experienced some stuff, and and we pre appreciate the 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 beauty and the simplicity of somebody that's got your back. You know, Absolutely. there's there's nothing I can't do because I, I got somebody that that believes in me and what I'm doing. That's so and, and I got to say that Mesa sang the crap out of the song. She sang it. You know, I'm telling you, she, she, she talks about being intimidated when <laughs> when I, I'm having to pro produce a vocal with one of my favorite singers in the world. I'm like, how can I tell Mesa what to do? It just doesn't make sense. But she was so so gracious and so uh beautiful to work with I, I thank god every day for for her and for for putting us together to to, to make this song so thank well, you mesa well mesa thank i you. tell you you did not seem intimidated <laughs> by no means you sang <laughs> that song <laughs> thank you thank you thank you it makes you feel good, that song. You know, it just takes you to another uh, level. It makes you know that it's your best friend, somebody you love, mm -hmm. somebody you care about, and it's an everyday life care. It's not, you know, yeah. it's, you know how we have the wedding and everybody is yeah. fairy tale and everything, but this just shows you that it's daily. Yeah. Yeah. This is a daily, daily effort. I just wait, but I want. I think the song resonates with me because I want. I want to feel that with someone, and I haven't had. You know, I've been in relationships and been in love and all that kind of stuff. And most people have heard my breakup songs, you know. But for the most part, <laughs> I want to feel that <laughs> that kind of love for somebody. To, you know, I've been waiting a long time for that. So hopefully, that's coming soon. So that the song inspires me. It's like, it's like uh, I listen to it a lot, you know, and I try to help. It helps me to think about how to manifest. And, and hopefully in you know, a pray for and wait for whoever, my Prince mm -hmm. Charming, whoever you <laughs> I love that. It's coming. It's coming, lady. It's okay. coming. It's coming. It's coming. But you have some great songs that are out, lady, that people want me to really hit on. Uh, but it's a, a few of them are renditions of others. Sin for okay. me, Atlantic Star. Oh, wow. <laughs> people have been singing Sin for me and just, Cam, you got to ask about that one. Where did that come from that you would remake that one? Why so? 
Uh, just I was just doing, a, I've done three covers albums. The first one was Sweet Classic Soul. The second one was Feel the Fire. And mm -hmm. the third one, Love is a Battlefield. Mm -hmm. And so it, I just choose songs that I, you know, grew up listening to or just happen to love. Like even on Love is a Battlefield, um, I redid Justin Bieber's As Long As You Love Me. Mm -hmm. And um, people are like, well, why would you want to do that song? Like, what, what do you know about Justin Bieber? Like, well, I have nieces, and they, they want to be deaf about this, man. I to listen to the music. <laughs> and that's one song that, of course, you know, resonates with me lyrically. You know, as long as you love me, we can be homeless, we can be, you know, whatever, we can be broke, whatever. And I just like, you know, that's just a great lyric. And so, and a melody together. So I just wanted to redo that song, almost as a surprise for my nieces, too. And, and also, you know, uh, uh, one of my nieces was one of his big... Uh, followers he he would acknowledge her and stuff like so she she said no so i haven't heard from her but i know he heard it that's the one thing <laughs> you so did that a, was cool that was cool. yeah you did another one love is a battlefield that was really a mantra you really did when people everybody needs to look at that video they need to really look at that song yeah. and really kind of understand where did that one come from where did you in, including the video well, why so uh, well the well the 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 song, I mean, the sentiment came because I wanted to, uh, I, it was for political reasons. We were all going through such right. craziness in our last five years. So, and so I wanted to kind of express that, you know, love is worth fighting for. So I know Pat Benatar and, and the writers had a, maybe a different, uh, they were going a different direction with it, but I thought lyrically it still could take us to the same place. Mm -hmm. uh, that we should fight for love. And, and there are more people who are loving in this world than there are the hateful ones. And the loving ones, of course, we they outweigh the hateful ones, so we have to band together and make this world what we want it to be. So that's why I kind of slowed it down. And, and, and you, know, that's, you know, the original, the writers of the song said, they, they emailed me and said, thank you for doing it as we wrote it. That it was, it was written as a ballad mm -hmm. in the beginning. Pat Benatar and our people made it a huge, super mega million, trillion dollar rock hit that it was, <laughs> that it is. Uh, but I just wanted to flip it on this on, in, in this original state and, and do it that way to get the lyrics out there even more and people understand where I was coming from. And it's been a very powerful song in my shows and, uh, and uh, we've had a great time with it. So I was honored to be able to sing it. Absolutely. Mr. Daryl, jump right in here. Let's talk about uh, what have you learned along the way? Probably so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a that's a big question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've learned to to be true to who I am, mm -hmm. um, to to believe in myself, um, to not be afraid to ask for what you want, um, and um, to just go for it. I mean, um, I believe that no one will invest as an artist. No one will invest in you if you don't invest in yourself first. Mm. So yes. I have, you know, made the sacrifices to make the music that I make and to make it the way I want to. I'm glad I don't have a, a record label because I get to do what's really in my heart and make it the way uh, I want to. And that works for me, you mm. know. Um, I've, I've learned I'm a bit of a control freak. I, I didn't, <laughs> I wasn't aware of that. My my wife is probably going duh, but you know <laughs> you have to you have to be in control of your dream mm -hmm. because nobody else can interpret what's in your head or in your heart. So mm -hmm. absolutely, I love that COVID hit, Mr. Daryl. Coming back to you, and once it hit, we were talking mm -hmm. about the fact of February and then you know the beginning of March, and then so many people unfortunately were losing things. Many uh, from music you know, uh, artists to, you know, basketball players, football players, whoever they might be, yeah. because of course, uh, you no longer have your income. You know, many was living check to check, even though you're thinking some people at $200,000 check or, you know, 50,000, a million dollar check, but they yeah. were living check to check, you know, six to seven cars, you've got so many houses, you got, you know, all of these different expenses that you have to pay. Right. Mm -hmm. Just going mm -hmm. through, looking at COVID, what were what were you experiencing, or what did you see, like that? Well, I first of all, I was incredibly blessed that uh, my wife and I were able to work from home 
you know, mm-hmm. with, my, with my day job. So we were able to sustain um, our, our family and, and, you know, help some other people along the way. I saw a lot of friends who had to, to make decisions about, you know, how, how they're going to continue to, to survive or, or pay their mortgage or their rent or the car payment. Right. Um, um, I, I made a bold decision to try to make music in the midst of COVID, mm-hmm. which as I was doing it, I thought was insane, but it, it worked out. But it also gave me something to to focus on because, you know, in the middle of COVID, we're also dealing with a, 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 a really uh, socio-political situation and making music gave me relief, gave me peace. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it forced it forced me to find different ways to make music. You know, obviously things had to be done remotely and the technology exists for us to be able to do that, which was helpful. And um, I got to work with some really incredible people because no one was touring, no one was no one was busy, so it was kind of a blank slate. Everybody was open. It's like, hey, do you want to do you want to work on this song? Do you want to play on this song? And people that I may not have had access to before were, were right there. So um, I was incredibly blessed through this whole whole thing, and um, I that's that's a point that's not lost on me because not everybody had that that situation, and, and hopefully, I was able to help some other people. Um, along the way. Sounds good. Let's do this. We'll take a break and we'll be right back on the Cam Hill Show. We'll be right back to the Cam Hill Show after these messages. I, I didn't want her to start talking. The Cam Hill Show. If you'd like to advertise your business or become a sponsor, contact the Cam Hill Show at gmail.com. Move up at Ron Carter Cadillac. Drive the new 2021 Cadillac XT4 Luxury Collection for only $319 a month. The new 2021 Cadillac XT5 Luxury Collection for only $399 a month. Both for 39 months lease with just $1 down. Or purchase either and enjoy 1.9% APR for 60 months plus bonus cash. Gulf Freeway, just two minutes south of the Beltway. Shop smarter when you shop Ron Carter. Ron Carter Cadillac. Prenatal promise is to make sure my baby is safe and healthy. Because I know it is possible to acquire syphilis, HIV, or other STDs without knowing it, getting tested is my very first chance to protect my baby. Doctors are required to give expectant mothers three separate tests for syphilis. If you're pregnant, ask your doctor if you're being tested properly for syphilis and other STDs. Congenital syphilis can lead to a miscarriage, stillbirth, or an infant death. Don't risk your baby's health. To find out more, visit myprenatalpromise.com. And now back to the Cam Hill Show. Hey, family, we are back. We're talking to Mesa and Mr. Daryl Anders. Mesa, for you, we were just talking to Mr. Daryl about COVID. What happened? What did you see in COVID? And what was happening to other artists that you might have seen or talked to? Well, it's uh, it hit so suddenly. We, I was doing a concert. Uh, on March 12th, and uh, and and after the concert, uh, I was getting calls back to back saying, "You got to go to the store; that they're going to shut down this, all mm-hmm. the stores." I'm like, "What? What is going on?" So, <laughs> went to the store, and uh, and there was no food in the store. It was like a movie. I was like, "Wait a right. minute! I don't know what's going on." And then uh, the next two days later, I was supposed to go on the Smooth Jazz Cruise, the second part of the Smooth Jazz Cruise, and they hadn't canceled it. Uh, so I packed that morning and. Everybody was like, I mean, people call me from all over the country, like, please don't get on that boat. Please don't get on that right. boat. You're not going to come back. Like, they're going to hold you out in the ocean forever. And I, was, <laughs> I was like, I got to go. Like, you know, you know, and then at noon, they put the money in my account. And I was like, I got to go. So 4 p.m., I was at the door with my luggage. And that's when we got the call saying they canceled the whole thing. So 
I was able to, you know, I was like less if they had just paid me. So I just, I was able to survive a little while on that money. Nice. Uh, so, cause I didn't know what to do. Everything was canceled back to like everything. Every, it was like every day there was more shows canceled, more shows canceled. And then so we went into a little bit of a panic. And then I'll be, I was able to get some unemployment. Uh, I've been on unemployment since this started, which is going to end pretty soon. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, on, on Sunday nights, I do something called Mesa's Kitchen Karaoke Sundays, yes. where I sing with people at 7.30 p.m. It's, it started off five years ago. Uh, it was just for me just to, you know, just to give back to everybody who supported me all these years. And when the pandemic hit, uh, I got a lot of phone calls from my colleagues in the music industry saying, like, okay, what do I do? Because I don't... I got to find a way to com- connect with everybody. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and that's the first time I ever put up my cash app because uh, that's what everybody was doing. And that's the, that was the way to help to get some income coming in. And people were very generous and very sweet to me. So I, I, that's, you know, even though I didn't want to, I, I ended up doing it. And that's, that's, that's helped sustain me also throughout this time. And also doing uh, online um concerts uh you know little things for like uh sororities and things like that just doing some online shows uh have have helped also too so you know a lot of my friends i mean we just didn't know we just had to kind of jump into this mode of of doing everything online you know we had to figure it out and um and so it was like a you know the learning curve was like really steep and really amazing (laughs) that you had to really really learn on your feet i mean luckily i had i've already been doing this so i was cool I, i was able to get and keep going uh, so uh, that was it was a it's a blessing. I mean, this whole thing is so so surreal because you know I, I wish there hadn't been any deaths from this uh, COVID thing. That was that's the most devastating thing. The sickness and the death from from all of this uh, has been absolutely awful. And so, but it's somehow it's like yeah, it kind of shut the world down. It made everybody think a little, a little bit more. Mm-hmm. It made everybody kind of yeah. like figure out your life and, and and kind of appreciate what you did have and what you have had all this time, you know? So kind of reset everything, I think. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. For both of you all, I'm so glad that you all just took the time and just uh, sitting here and less talking, you know, let other people <laughs> see what's going on. Uh, just the Thank world, you. right? Just seeing how yep. just coming from in a year ago, right and looking mm-hmm. at yeah. what happened how the world completely just shut completely down and now we have a new normal we don't mm-hmm. it, it, some don't wear the mask some wear them we still got to wear them in some <laughs> stores we give, still got to wear them in the others i've bought so many because i've got <laughs> but clothes i gotta wear them <laughs> uh-huh, yes. you know so it's just got to the point and then we reconnect with family right Many, mm-hmm. many husbands didn't know the wives anyway. They said, hey, oh, that's you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's just right. reconnecting with family, reconnecting with friends. Mr. Daryl, take us out and let us talk about what would you like to leave with the viewers? You know, I, I hope that when people listen to um, music, who, whoever they choose to listen to, I hope it brings them some joy. Um, I hope it gives them uh, a, an escape from their problems. And um, I hope that, that nobody but you makes people um, feel good. I hope it brings them some, some happiness and peace in their, their life. And I hope I can continue to contribute something positive in that way through music. Sounds good. How do we purchase your music? It's available on iTunes, Spotify, all the major download uh, and streaming services, as well as on my website, agapesoul.com. Absolutely. I appreciate you. Miss Mesa, what would you like to leave with the viewers? Uh, thank you for all the everything you have done to, you know, new or old, to, to support my music for all these years. And uh, I just want uh, everybody to find happiness you know we're here on this earth to enjoy uh being on this earth and so i, I just wish for everybody to find some peace and happiness and and uh don't let anybody uh see you sweat just don't let anybody hurt you just keep going and 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 just be happy that's all i want for everybody 
Sounds good. How do people purchase your music? And if they're new artists that want that are out or just artists, period, that are looking for a label, how do they get in touch with you, your label? Well, uh, label thing is probably going to be a few years away, but for right now, as far mm -hmm. as I'm, I'm the only artist on my label right now. Okay. So, okay. Uh, you can go to Mesa.com, M-A-Y-S-A.com or the Mesa store.com. And you can find out all the information about me and, and buying merchandise, buying music, <laughs> um, and all those good stuff. So, and then it's all both there. of them, you'll see them along the way, especially Mesa online. I look at her and trust me, uh, she kills <laughs> it online too. <laughs> Let's also do a shout out to Sabrina Taylor, the platinum agencies yep. that connected us all together. Shout out to yep. her. Thank you. And I appreciate you both. God bless you. God keep you. Keep Thank going. You. Keep doing you. We appreciate Thank you. everything you do, especially in the music realm. Black music series. This is what we're doing for June. But this is 365 days a year. Trust me, you all mm -hmm. are killing Absolutely. it. Keep going. Thank you. And just know Thank that you. we're out here rooting for you and we appreciate you along the way. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much for looking. The Cam Hill Show, 1231, 30 Central Standard Time. See you then. Bye.